Well, blessings to you and greetings again. We're thankful that we can come and share the Word of God with you. You know, the Bible is such a precious book, and I'm so glad that we can have one, and that many of us can have one in various parts of the world. But you know, there's still lots of people that don't have Bibles. But thank God if you have a Bible, give Him thanks today for having the living, written Word in your hand. We're so glad to be with you, and over the next few days, we're going to be talking about discipleship empowerment tip. And the, what is going to be the word that we're going to be focusing on in over four different messages is the word gift. And so I want to be able to break this word gift down in the various areas because when we talk about gifts, they're used in different ways, especially if you put an S on it. So they have gifts, and then there's the gift, and then there's the gift of empowerment. And, and so... I, I felt that as I was praying and, and seeking the Lord about this, because we were moving on to Pentecost Sunday, which is this weekend, that it would be appropriate to talk about the gift and how this word affects uh, various things as we get to Pentecost Sunday. And so for those of you who can join us every night, uh, tonight we're going to deal with the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. And tomorrow night, we're going to deal with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then on Saturday night, we're going to deal with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then on Sunday, we're going to deal with the gift of the Holy Spirit's power. So we're going to look at it four different ways as we continue to move to Pentecost Sunday. It's a wonderful day that we should be celebrating in our churches all around the world it's, it's an exciting time when we can just praise God for what He has done and He continues to do. And so tonight, as we look at this word gift, we want to again see how God Himself gave a gift and then how Jesus Christ was involved in being a gift and then how the Holy Spirit has also come to be a gift to us, to empower us, and to work through us. And so again, there is, most of our focus is going to be over the next few days is on the spiritual side. Not so much about the physical gift that is uh, sometimes we can give one to another or an emotional gift. But I want to focus a lot more on the spiritual gift. And also, I need to make sure I slow down a little bit because I need to explain some words and those on this side of the world, what we're going to be talking about is it could be new and, and uh, something that they've not heard before. And so we have to uh, take some time just to kind of build our steps as we move through to Pentecost Sunday. And hopefully we'll be able to have a great time of celebrating together. So our title tonight is The Gift of God, Jesus Christ. I, I, I put that in there first because it's the foundation. You know, we know in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed within him we should not perish but have everlasting life. And we will see as we read scriptures tonight that this was the gift of the Father to us by sending his son. His son is a gift to us, and we need to thank God for that. And so, but as we start off in scripture, we're not going to be able to always use the word gift, but the concept of giving is there. When we go back into Isaiah chapter 53, the whole chapter talks about how Jesus gave himself in various ways, and how he would give himself. It's a prophetic word that Isaiah gives at least a thousand years probably before the time of Christ. Maybe not quite that many years, but quite a few years before Christ himself was given as a gift by the Father and was sent here to earth to be with us, to live amongst us, and then to die for us, and then to rise again. And so Isaiah talks about in 53 how he would be an atoning gift for us. Now that word atoning is just, you know, is the idea that it would be a covering, a gift that would be given, that would be given by his blood so that it would cover over our sins. So 
we couldn't pay for our sins. We were living in sins, and and often because of that, we had no way to get out of sins. And the only way to get out of sin is for someone to come and who was innocent and who was pure and was able to become the atoning sacrifice or to become in our stead for us. And also, this there's two big words right at the very beginning, and I know we should spend more time on them. And and uh, if you don't, as, as people say, if you don't know what the word is, just Google it, I guess. But that Isaiah gives the idea of atonement, and it also gives the idea of substitution, which is, you know, we were guilty of our sins, and we weren't able to pay that. And so in front of a judge, when you're not able to do that, of course, then you get judged and go to jail. But what happens in this case, the idea of substitution is that Jesus comes along and says, yes, I know that person can't pay for their sins. I know that person deserves death and damnation. But judge, I'm asking you to forgive them and let me come in their stead that I can stand in their place. And so he substitutes himself for us. And that's what Isaiah is talking about, of this idea of atonement and substitution. Then as we go over into, we're going to begin to start from John chapter 1. And we're going to spend most of our time in the New Testament tonight talking about the gift of God. Because I think it's important to build this foundation as we move because it's connected. Because if the gift of God didn't take place through his son, Jesus Christ, there would be no outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They're directly connected to each other. So it's like two sides of the coin. When you have Jesus, you can also have the Holy Spirit. If you accept Jesus as your, as your salvation and as your Savior, you also need to accept the Holy Spirit as your teacher and empower. And so as we go over to John here, in John chapter 1, it talks about in verse 16 and 17, where, he, where we are told, And of his fullness we have received, uh, received and grace for grace. Verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So we're starting right off at the very beginning that the purpose of the gift of God was to bring himself and himself would be the bearer of grace to us. Grace, love, and mercy is what he brings to us as a free gift if we would just accept him. Again, over in John 1.29, it talks about that the next day that John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So even John the Baptist knew when he saw Jesus coming, he said, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one that's going to be sacrificed. He is the one that's going to be the greatest gift to mankind ever, where he will lay down his life for us, because without him, we cannot have eternal life. And that's why we can go over into John 3, 16 and 17, a verse that often we have memorized. And if you haven't memorized it, it's a good verse to memorize. For it says in verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then it goes on in verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the first part of understanding about Pentecost that God sent forth 50 days later after he sent after he died on the cross and was resurrected 50 days later of course then he sends the gift of the Holy Spirit but the first gift that we must receive before we can uh, uh, get attached to the second one which is the Holy Spirit is the gift of God himself as we go over a little further in John, John chapter 4, verse 10, 
Jesus is talking to both the woman at the well and he talks to her and says, woman, if you would just understand who you're talking to right now. And in John chapter 4, verse 10, he says this. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who, say, who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. See, Jesus comes to be a gift to us. And one of the things that he loves to do is that we come to him and ask of him to give us that living water, that freshness of his power, of his anointing, which we will talk about in a few moments, to us. And so the woman at the well, you know, she was flabbergasted at what he was saying. She says, you know, I think I know that you're a prophet and that. And, I, you know, are you like the ones who were our forefathers? And Jesus said, yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm like them, but I'm a lot different than them because if you would know who I am, I would not just give you water like your forefathers did that dug this well. I'm going to give you living water. And that's what the Holy Spirit becomes to us, freshness and living water in our lives. In John 16, we Jesus goes on as he talks uh, you know, after John 15, it talks about abiding in the vine. And then over in 16, he goes on and talks about how he's going to send the helper who is going to convict us of sin and also is going to be there to show us righteousness. And then in John 16, 13, how he would be the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit would come and speak truth into our lives. You know, in a world where right now there is so much going on, with the lack of truth, with not knowing what is true anymore and what is real. That's why we need to have the Holy Spirit and the power of God through Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit has been sent to be our comforter and to teach us and to also give us truth. This is what he gives as a gift to us. Then over in John chapter 19, he goes on and talks a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. And this is Jesus talking about what it was going to yet be coming. Not only was he himself going to be a gift, but he was now, after his death and resurrection, when he went to glory with the heaven, he was going to send another one. Another part of who himself was, which would be known as the Comforter. And so on John chapter 19... We have from verses 17 to 30, the death of Jesus Christ. And then in John chapter 20, from verses 1 to 18, we have the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the uniqueness comes when we get over into John chapter 20 and verse 22, where he says to his disciples, and he said to them, he says, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. There was a transition that was going to take place. The first gift was going to be the gift from God of Jesus Christ. But then after that gift had fulfilled his purpose here on earth to become the redemption for us so that we could have salvation, the next gift that would come along right after that, as we know as Pentecost, was the gift of the Holy Spirit and that they were to receive the Holy Spirit. Well, that's what we find out when we go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And again, over the next number of nights, as we talk tonight about the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, and tomorrow night we're going to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then Saturday about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then on Sunday, the gift of the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to be moving along and so some scriptures we'll use tonight others we'll use over the next number of days but in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 Peter has been preaching to the people the Holy Spirit has come upon them they have been baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit he has come upon them in the upper room and the people there was a commotion in the city saying what's going on and what Paul Paul or Peter is going to say to them well, this is the fulfilling of Joel, just like the prophecy was being fulfilled that God was going to send forth another gift, and this would be the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? So we're moving in a transition from the gift of God, that God give him himself, now to the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can now ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And the idea of baptism, and not everybody's going to agree with me on that, that's fine. But the idea of baptism means to be totally covered over. It's not a little sprinkle, it's not a little face cloth washing, it's to be totally covered over from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. You're to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. So when the enemy looks at you, he seals, sees that you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. When God the Father looks at you, he sees that you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, that you now have on the breastplate of righteousness. You've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. All these wonderful things are taking place at this gift. And again, we're going to get more into that tomorrow night of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you may want to make sure you get back for that. But he goes on in Romans chapter 5, and he now begins to spend a, a good portion of Romans chapter 5 explaining this whole idea, you know, where he talks from 15 to 21. We get the word gift used four times. So you can see that he is trying to emphasize the gift of God. And what he was trying to say to them, and we don't have time to read all this scripture tonight, but he was trying to say to them that the first Adam brought death. You know, there, there was destruction because of their sin and disobedience. Destruction and death came upon all mankind. For all are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. But here, Paul is going to remind the readers that even though the offense of Adam was in place, now because of the gift of Jesus Christ and what he gave us, things have changed. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense. Then in verse 16, and the gift is not like that which came through who one sin. Then verse 17, and he goes on, For if by the one man's offense death reign through one man, much more those who receive an abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So the gift of Jesus Christ. He goes on in verse 18, Therefore, he sums up about all this gift, Therefore, as though one man's offense, judgment came to all men. He's talking about Adam here. Because of what Adam and Eve did, judgment came upon us, resulting in condemnation. We were guilty as charged. Even so, one man's righteous act, the free gift, notice that, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Now, this gift comes to all, and we're going to talk about that, but if you don't receive it, it's not your gift. That's the challenge here. You know, you can put a gift out, and if somebody won't take it, it's not theirs. But praise God, Jesus is offering his free gift of salvation to all who would receive it if we will just take it. And it's an abundance of grace. We see in verse 20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. The gift of grace, the wonderful thing that Jesus did, above all other things, and I understood that very much. Because when I came from the streets and I was involved in all kinds of sin and alcohol and perversion and theft, thievery and everything else, I couldn't quite understand what Jesus could do. And then one day Irene explained to me, don't you understand the grace of God? The grace of God is broad. It's wide. It's there for everyone. It's an abundance. And you just have to receive him. And when you receive him, you receive not only him in name, but you also receive him in power and anointing. And when you do that, you also receive his grace, his mercy. Oh, there's so much that we can receive from God. 
God is a given God. He just wants to keep blessing his children with gifts. Amen. And each one of us that are listening tonight, it's not over yet. He keeps giving. He gives more grace. He gives more love. He gives more mercy. He gives it to us in an abundance. He gives us more of his power, more of his spirit. Whatever it is that we need, God is a giving God. But we just have to receive it. That's the challenge. Are we willing to receive it? I can put a gift in front of you and say, that's your gift. But if you don't take it and open it up and use it, it has no value. And that's why when people walk by, many people walk by the cross and they shook their heads. Oh, it's too bad about that guy. There's many people that walk by and they hear the testimonies of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's for them. You know, they hear over and over again about the gift of God. But thousands upon millions of people just walk by and they walk by and they walk by not knowing that this is a free gift that was given out of great love, great cost, great mercy, so that if we would just take it, if we would just take it into our hearts and receive him as Lord and Savior, our lives would be changed. That's what happened to me. My life was changed. And Paul is trying to explain that to the Romans. Can't you see? We're no longer under the law, the judgment of the law, but we're under the free gift of Jesus Christ. We've moved from law righteousness to grace righteousness. Amen? That's what we're walking under, the righteousness and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Romans 6.23, he just confirms this. If you need a scripture for those who haven't, don't know this part of the word of God, in Romans 3 or 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. That's the result of sin. But the gift, but the gift of God, but the gift of God is eternal life, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, how much more exciting can that get? But the gift of God is in Jesus Christ our Lord, who gives eternal life. I don't know about you, but if you can just grasp that, you will be jumping up and down, dancing around in your house saying, Thank you, Lord. I don't have to spend an eternity in destruction and death, but I can spend an eternity in you. I don't have to live all kinds of lives and go around in a circle. I just have to trust you today. And when I trust you today, you will then in, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And you will empower me by your Holy Spirit so that I can be able to do what you want me to do. That's why in 2 Corinthians, Paul says in chapter 9, verse 15, he says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It's sometimes, Paul, you know, he said before what Jesus did, it was a mystery. But now it's indescribable. It's not a mystery anymore, but it's just it's indescribable that God would give himself to us. That God would pour himself out as an offering for us. So that if we would just receive him, we could have all of him. We could be joint heirs with him. We are a child of God. We can expend eternity. It's, I mean, people, I, I don't know how else to tell you. There is so much to tell you. That's why I've divided this message up into four different messages. Because first of all, we got to get the foundation here that the gift of God is Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be looking any other way. We shouldn't try to manipulate any other kind of ideas. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life. There is no other way, the Bible says, that you can get to heaven. And so if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I hate to tell you this, but you're not going to heaven. You're going to spend an eternity in destruction and death. But if you invite Jesus Christ into your heart and receive him as your Lord and Savior tonight... You are going to have this indescribable gift come into your heart. And it's going to begin to flow out. Well, our last scripture is, is in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. Again, just talks a little bit more about who God is. Ephesians 2, 
uh, 8 and 9. It says, For by the grace you have been saved. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. You can't do it. You can't do it. There's no way. No, 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 no. I couldn't do it. You can't do it. We are born into sin. You might as well get that. You're a sinner without Jesus Christ. You're a sinner. But he says here, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves, comma, or semicolon. It is the gift of God. That's why I titled tonight's message the way it is. It is the gift of God. Can I read that again to you? I hope you can memorize that verse. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith. Through believing and just putting your heart into his hands. And that it's not of yourself. Not anything you could do. Not anything you could muster up. Not enough wisdom. Not enough anything you could do could get it. It is the gift of God of God. Isn't that amazing? It's the gift of God. And that's why it's this weekend, as we begin to move towards the Pentecost Sunday, we need to set this foundation first. Many, many people don't have the power of the Holy Spirit because they don't have Jesus as the gift of God in their heart. They're walking in religion, but they're not walking in faith. Faith is believing and confessing our sins and asking Him to come into our heart and be our Lord and Savior. That's what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that if we confess with our mouth, speak it out. Don't be afraid of it. Speak it out, confess with our mouth, and believe in our heart, you will be saved. Did you hear that? Romans 10, 9 and 10. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we'll be saved. See, God has given us the gift of, of his son and he we need to freely receive him we should freely give him not only into our lives take him into our lives but we need to freely give him to others also we need to be out there and say freely i have received i now freely give we as people or god are to give a gift to one another and the greatest gift we can give to each other is jesus christ so to me a challenging thought for all of us it's like anything else. We must first take the gift, open it, and then use it. You know, I know of so many people that have taken the gift. They've even opened it and say, oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. But James says, don't just be a hearer. Be a doer. Do something with it. Let the fire of God begin to burn and begin to start a fire inside you that it would go out and touch others. So we need to take it. If you've never taken Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, take him tonight. Don't postpone another day. And if you receive him tonight, open up all you can learn about him in his word. And then as you open up who he is, then begin to do what he has called us to do, to be his servants and to be his disciples, people who are willing to follow him. And so remember, Jesus Christ is the free gift and we must personally receive him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, O God, that we have this opportunity to lay this foundation tonight. And I pray, O God, that you're going to use this word that you have laid on my heart and to be able to try to share with the people how great a gift you are from God, Jesus, and how you were given to us. And Lord, that you've got much, much more that you want to give to us. You have so much that you want to share and gift us with. And we thank you now. And we just ask your blessing to be with us this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, I hope today that you've been challenged to receive the gift of God, who is Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, again, this next few days, tomorrow we're going to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be there. It's going to shake your boat. Then we're going to talk on Saturday about the various gifts.
that God gives us. And then on Sunday, we're going to be talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit's power. We need to go forth not in our strength and power, but in His. So I hope that you will join us every day. And those of you who know me well, I ask that you would just continue to pray. Pray like never before. Because people, this is going out and it's needed on this side of the world. We need the anointing and the power on this side as I know you need it on that side. And we need to walk with God and all that he gives us. Amen. So receive the gift of God of Jesus Christ tonight. And so thank you again for being with us. And God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow as we talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Good night.